What's up, what is good fam? I am so excited. It is Wednesday, and this is a very special day. I have someone on the podcast that I honestly can't believe we're not like real life friends, and we should be because we have so many mutual friends. Um, she has a new album out called Canyon. She's amazing. Her name is Ellie Holcomb, and we want to welcome you to the What That's Good podcast. So welcome, I am Ellie. So glad to be here. I know I'm like air hug. I love you so much from afar, and so many of my people love you, and that are your people too. So it's fun to finally get to talk. It's so great. I'm so excited, and I was kind of telling you this before we popped on, but no matter who I get to interview, it's so exciting because I get to really dive into their life and listen to their album and read whatever book they have or watch all the videos that they've done, and you were so inspiring, and every time I get to do that, I feel so blessed to receive you know, the things that you put out, and so just a little sidebar for anyone who follows Ellie, or if you don't, if you just go like stalk her life like I did, you'll be very blessed uh, <laughs> because you have so many great things out in the world. Um, you, um, you seem like just an incredible wife and mom and leader and just all the things. And so before we get into all that, I got to ask you the question of the Let's Go podcast. What is the best piece of advice that you have ever been given? You know what? My mom, it's for, It's just from my mom. And it's, it didn't even come in the form of advice, but it just she just prayed first. She prayed That's first. Cool. Right That's right good. <laughs> And so I, and it's so interesting. I was thinking, you know, with my kids, I've got three kids and I was thinking, how did I learn how to pray? And nobody sat down and taught me. My mom didn't say, this is how you do it. She just prayed over everything. And so, um, I think, I think, uh, I feel to me, it feels the way that she, if I could say it in a, in a form of advice, what she did, it was talk to the friend, talk to, talk to the, talk to the friend. And so so he is like, he's the, he's the dearest person I know, Jesus. And so I just am, I think, I think for me, that has been, um, a really good one. And then if I can do follow that up with a second, I would say from my mother-in-law, she uh, is just lead with gratitude. That's Talk to good. the friend and lead with gratitude or like, that's so pretty good. solid way to roll through life. <laughs> I love that. And what better person, people to come from than the moms in your life. I love that so much. And it's also cool whenever people, it's like, yes, people give you advice and sometimes that sticks with you, but it's also like the advice people live with is like, sometimes it is the coolest thing ever. Like there have been people in my life that I look up to that Honestly, I don't really know that well, but I've learned so much from them, not because they like said, Sadie, you need to know this, but because I just see how they live and I'm like, that, like, that's how I want to live, you know? That's exactly, that's exactly right. And it's, that is the kind that, I don't know, it just like rubs off, it rubs off on you and sinks in really, really deep. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, so true. Okay. It's so true. Because that's, that's why you, like you see, and instead of somebody just saying you should do this, like you actually get to see the benefit of like why to do that. It's like, well, I see this person talk to God. I see the fruit of her life. I want to do that too. You know, I think that's, that's really exactly, cool. Exactly. That's exactly right. And I mean, I will say this. It used to make me, I'm just thinking back to when I was in college, you know, and um, or in high school drama. We all know, we all have that in our lives, you know, drama, people saying things that hurt your feelings or whatever, harder relationship things. And, and I mean, my mom would just be like, okay, we're going to pray. I want you to pray about this. And it honestly, it used to make me mad. Do you know, like, I just was like, no, tell me what, tell me what to do, mom. I mean, I want you to like, I want you to give me advice. And she did plenty of that, but never before having me get before the Lord. And she, and she always said, Ellie, here's the thing. She was like, you cannot get into the presence of God and stay the same. Wow. You can't. That's it's so impossible. Good. And so she was like, I'm not saying that you're the only one that needs changing in here, but you can for sure bet that your heart will change and that what God wants to do in you through this trial will happen if you spend time talking with him in his presence. And so I just yeah. thought, well, it used to make me really mad, but it's really true. It's really true. <laughs> that is so good. I love that. I was just telling someone, um, literally right before this podcast, I was like, right before I did this, like I was trying to ask all these mentors, like, what should I do? And like, I wanted someone to say like, either like do it or don't do it. And nobody 
did either. They didn't say do it. They didn't say don't do it. They said ask God what you should do. And I was the same way. I was kind of frustrated. I was like, but I really just would rather you tell me what to do. But I was so <laughs> glad like they didn't and because you're right. Like when I talk to God, I, I it changes me and it actually leads me to what he wants me to do. And it's always the best thing for me to do. And no other person can tell me, you know, what I need to know more than God himself. And yes, they can encourage you and influence you. And we all need mentors and we all need to be humble enough to receive. But at the same time, like unless we allow God to change through us and we're never going to do it, you know, we're never even going to take the advice they give. So (laughs) and he is like the best listener and the kindest ear to pour out your heart. There's one Psalm that I love that talks about, I pour out my sighs before the Lord. And I just, I, I love that. I think uh, right now, especially all of us, no matter what stage of life we're in, there are lots of things to sigh about. Like just, Oh God, I am weary from this season. And so I just, I, for, I still, I still have to be reminded to go get in front of him and my, and my mom and my husband, there are people in my life that remind me to do that where I'm like stressing out. What do I need to do? And it's like, no, go talk Talk to the friend, friend. go talk Talk to to the the friend. friend. I love it. That is such good advice. So you mentioned your husband, you and Drew are both like artists, musicians, and which yeah. I find incredible. Me and Christian are not like that at all. <laughs> like I can't even imagine us like trying to be like that because it would be so funny. But I love that about y'all. So back it up. You know, a lot of people know y'all now, but how did y'all, how did y'all actually meet? Yeah, he was my best guy friend in college. We went to the University of Tennessee. Uh, which makes me want to say like go balls, but really I'm like ah, we've struggled for a while now. <laughs> go, go sports, go um, sports. But we go sports, go athleticism. Um, I but he was we were very very dear friends. We, we met literally actually on the steps of a party. I was coming down, he was coming up, oh, and sweet. I'm super friendly. And I you know I said hey, what's your name? He said my name's. Drew, what's yours, Ellie? And I said, what'd you do today? And he actually said, Sadie, he said, I actually flew a plane for the first time by myself. He was getting his pilot's wow, license. Wow, that's in the day. so cool. Isn't that great? So we fast forward uh, a lot of heartbreak in between there. He, best guy friend, had a super like awful, like hard relationship mm. in, in uh, college. Um, a lot of like, um, I don't know how deep are we going to go here? Like go spiritual, deep. uh, physical, like all some abuse, wow. you know, just oh not gosh. great. And so, um, I had, and, and God, you know, I knew better than to be in a situation yeah. like that. Yeah. Like I knew all the right things yeah. and, and just kind of lost my yeah. way. And so I found myself, um, just grieving, uh, when that came to an end and I didn't even have the courage to end it. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the, uh, the guy ended it. Thank God he had some sweet mentors in his life. So this is a great wow. reason to have mentors yes. who yes. just said, you've pretended to be a lot of things that you are not wow. in this relationship. Um, and do you want to pretend for the rest of your life Wow, or not? And he had the ring, Sadie. I mean, it was like, you know, like wow. he, like, so on the day that he was supposed to propose to me, ended up calling calling it off, which was like super embarrassing and sad and devastating. But Sadie, the way that God met me, like I just, I felt like I had done, um, just like not made the best decisions, not made the healthiest decisions and gotten myself into this unhealthy relationship. And the way that God met me, I'm Mm. like, all I feel like I have done is spit in your face, God, and run in the other direction and say, I know you love me, God, but I just... I, so my idol was, I think, I just want a man to love me. Like, I just want to, I want some, somebody to love me. I think my idol was kind of this, like getting married kind of thing. And, and man, when that ended and God said, I am still here and I still love you and I see you and I know that you've been running hard and fast in the other direction. And I, you are still my beloved. It's like that Hosea story. I started reading redeeming love by Francine Rivers. And I was like, God. I just fell. I was like, I'm going to go join a convent. He is is the one. He is the one true lover of your soul. And I think I had gotten to this point in that 
unhealthy relationship where I felt, um, I don't know. I, and I talked to a lot of other girls. We volunteered with Young Life over the years. And I hear this in a lot of girls' story, but feeling very much used and then discarded yeah. and feeling, I think the words that would have described me would have been unloved, unwanted, and unworthy. Wow. Wow. And in that place, God came and said, no, you are my beloved and I am yours. I am the one true lover of your soul. And nobody is going to be able, no man is going to be able to love you. Like I'm going to be able to love you. And I was like, what comment do you want me to join? (laughs) That's amazing. Love with him. And it was, uh, you know, it's so interesting. I think sometimes the broken parts of our story, I spent so much of my life, um, trying to be good enough and love God and other people enough. And that's not really the gospel, you know, mm-hmm. like the gospel, Tim coming hard and fast when we're running yeah. in the other direction. And Louis yeah. Giglio said this, our friend, but God didn't come to make bad people, good people. He came to make dead people, alive people. Yeah, and so on. that is what he did in my life. And wow. I, And so grateful. And here I thought this was this thing, this relationship was this thing and that ended and it felt like a death. And God just said, watch what I am going to do with this. I'm going to transform your heart. I actually have this person that you never thought that you would marry. I swore Sadie that I would never, I'll get back to Drew because I love him so much. (laughs) I swore I would never marry a musician. Wow. I swore I would never do music myself. And I swore that I would never marry my best guy friend from college, Drew Holcomb, because we would sing together and everybody would be like, oh, that's a thing. And I was like, oh, no, No. it is not. He is like (laughs) my brother. That's so weird. And I think God has a sense of humor and I'm so happy about it. Is that not crazy? All right, friends, I want to tell you something that's going to save a lot of time if you are anything like me and, you know, like to shop, but don't always have the time to go actually shop for clothes. In this world of Zoom meetings and all the different things that we're doing, constantly being photographed, sometimes it's nice to have something new, but again, you don't want to spend that much money. You don't want to go shopping, but Stitch Fix makes it so easy to shop for clothes that I think you'll absolutely love. Stitch Fix offers clothing hand-selected by expert stylists for your unique style, size, and budget. It's completely different and it's a very fun way to find clothes that you'll love to wear. Every piece is chosen for you and to fit you and your lifestyle, but it's done by experts. And sometimes that's the hard part of shopping. It's like, maybe this is cute, maybe it's not. Well, someone can help you decide. Try on pieces at home before you buy it. Keep your favorites and send back the rest. Stitch Fix has free shipping, easy returns and exchanges, and a prepaid return envelope is included. There are no subscriptions required. Just try Stitch Fix once or set up automatic delivery. You'll pay just $20 styling fee for each box, which gets credited towards pieces you keep, and there are no hidden fees ever. Stitch Fix has styles and clothing to fit any occasion for women, men, and kids, and they're also available in the UK. Whenever I tried Stitch Fix, it's very simple. You go in, and you tell them your size and your uh, style and the things that you like, and then you get a box delivered to you with clothing that they think will fit you perfectly. So get started today at stitchfix.com slash woe, and you'll get 25% off off when you keep everything in your fix. That's stitchfix.com slash woe for 25% off when you keep everything in your fix. Stitchfix.com slash woe. So how did how did you like, you know, swallow the pride and be like, okay, I am actually gonna marry my best guy friend and I am gonna be a musician. And like, how did you let God change your plan? How did he change that course? So I um, was so happy when that relationship ended. Uh, Drew and I had, you know, not been as close because I'm here, like, preparing to be married to this other guy. Wow. But I missed Drew so much. And so I saw him and I was just like, oh, my gosh, it is so good to get to be your friend again. So we started talking immediately. And he had kind of – he always says – he was like – I was always like, oh, yeah, I'm going to see – We're going to see about that later. I know she's not ready to date this other guy, whatever. So he had really been like sad, but just hands off, you know, respectfully, like she's going to marry this other guy. And when he heard, he was driving Knoxville. He heard that we had broken up. He was like, oh no, oh no, I got it. He was like, I'm okay. Dang it. Now I'm scared. Mm -hmm. My heart's going to get broken. So he 
six months, we start hanging out. Six months into that, he says, he sits me down, plays a song called I Like to Be With Me When I'm With You that night. And I remember mm-hmm. thinking, I wish, that, like I couldn't breathe when I heard him say, I was in the crowd uh, when he sang it. And I was like, oh my gosh, I, I wish that was about me. But that's weird because he's like my brother. That's so weird. Well, he sits down that night and says, I'm crazy about you. I know that you've been my best friend for a long time. Oh my gosh. But he, I love this city. He said, I know that you're healing right now and I want you to do everything that you need to do to, to, I know wow. you're on a journey with the Lord and I want to give you all the space to do that. Um, and so, but I also, when you're ready to ever date again, I think I, w- I, w- I feel like I could maybe deserve the first shot. Like if you would let me take you out whenever you're ready. So six months later, wow. We went on our first date and we walked into the Ryman Auditorium to see a girl named Patty Griffin, an artist play who I love. And Sadie, it was like we walked in, he held my hand walking in, and I was like, Oh no. This is gonna be terrible. <laughs> this is like he's just my brother. He's I just had him in like that friend zone. Right. And I promise you, over the course of one concert, one concert by the end of the show. I I was I knew I was going to spend every the rest of my life. Wow! Every single day for the rest that of my life. That is so sweet. <laughs> oh my gosh! I love your story. That is amazing. And to it's be really honest, sweet. it's it's very similar. I see a lot of similarities in our story. I had a pretty bad relationship and the same thing and then uh, similar things and right after I felt like I always say I felt like I actually found love when we broke up because that's whenever I met God in the realest way and it was just the sweetest thing and it was like the same thing it was like all of a sudden I had like not felt beautiful for all this time and then I felt like when God's like in the Bible, you're all together, beautiful, my darling. Those verses were like coming to life. And I'm like, why do I feel this being real whenever it's like I should be at my most broken, like my ugliest moment, like the most unloved. But yeah, I feel like the most loved, the most beautiful, the most alive. And that is what God does. And so hearing your story, I'm like, yes, like that's what God does. And so I hope when girls hear this, if they're in that situation, they can know that like God has more. And it's not more in like another God. Yes, God is good and like brought Drew into your life and brought Christian into mine. But before that, it was just him and like, and just Mm. him alone. Like it was good. And it was the ultimate like feeling of love and beauty and all the things. And so I love to hear that. Um, I love it too. Well, and then say to you come into a relationship, whether that's husband, whatever, what, whatever kind of relationship you're coming in, not needing this sense of validation you already know know. that you are beloved, like perfectly known and perfectly loved at the same time. And it is, it's so true because that's the thing I would get in other relationships whenever I was broken and I like, just kept feeling broken and it wasn't anything they were doing it was just what I believed about myself and so like until I believed that from God that I wasn't that and that I was loved and that I was you know worthy of love and you know I was a joy to him and all the different things then I could believe that from a person like even if I met Christian in my brokenness I don't know if I would have been able to believe his love for me until I believed God's first and so that's That's really cool that you said that and one thing I noticed in your story is you talked about how like you're super friendly person and obviously you are like you I feel like I've already known you for way longer than like 20 minutes um but like you're so friendly you're you're, even to say to him like what'd you do today like that's just like very rare in our like world um we're like how can you encourage girls in that and also do you feel like before like whenever you were in that relationship were you the same way or did it did you feel like it kind of took away a little bit about like the good things about who you are because I feel like sometimes like in relationships people ask me like how do I know if it's a bad relationship and I'm like what is it like still the joy of like who you are you know because I think sometimes Mm. we get in relationships and like all of a sudden like we're not as friendly and we're like not having that much fun in life and we're like crying way more than we're laughing and like we don't even realize it and we're like but I love you you know (laughs) <laughs> this isn't this isn't good. I would say I think I, I think one of the most beautiful things about Drew the the song that he wrote, this is gonna sound kind of cheesy because I'm gonna like quote this song that he wrote about me. I but it. it's I like to be with me when I'm with you. Like I am in my own 
skin. And it, and when I'm with you and it came from, uh, he said, it's like putting on my favorite pair of shoes. And it's this story from his aunt Tish and his uncle Twyford. His, his name was Twyford. So it was Tish and Twiff. Oh, wow. And Tish was <laughs> bell the ball. Like back in the day when you used to have a different you had a different date every night of the yeah, weekend. Yeah, yeah. That's sort of how people dated. Like her dance card was always full. And Twiff was her dearest friend in the world. And so she would go out on all of these dates and then she would come home and he lived down the street from her family and they would talk and have the best. And so she finally, she had all these, this doctor who wanted to marry her, all these kind of like very well, like, you know, big reputations, money, status, social status, and, who were proposing to her. Wow. And she came home one day and she said to her mom, she said, mom, when I am with all these other guys, I feel like I'm putting on like my fancy heels. But when I'm with Twiff, I feel like I'm in my slippers. Oh, that's so and, sweet. And Twiff asked her three times to marry him. And she had said no twice. Wow. And the third time he asked her, she was just like, I'm at mo- I'm the most comfortable in my own skin when I'm with you. And so I, love I do that. think. I love that you're asking that question, Sadie, because I do think, um, God, I I used to think uh, growing up in the church, like you're just supposed to become, well, you are supposed to become one. That's definitely a biblical, like beautiful thing. But what I thought that meant was that I completely lost who I was and yeah. I was just only about this. And that would be such a loss yeah. for for us to not be who God made us to be mm-hmm. as individual women and as individual men. And then you come together and you're who God made yeah. each of you be together, walking so side by side together. It's and beautiful. it is, um, I'm thankful for a reorienting of that understanding yes. of that truth. Cause beautiful. I think for a long time I would disappear, right. go away sad, you right. know, um, yeah. in relationships. Totally understand. Wow, that was beautifully put. I feel like I'm in my slippers. I love that. All right, friends, I got a question for you. Are you still going to the post office and still paying full price for postage? Well, thanks to stamps.com, you don't have to do that anymore. You can mail and ship anything from anywhere, anytime, right from your computer. Send letters, ship packages, and pay less, actually a lot less, with discounted rates from USPS and UPS and more. We've had a great experience with stamps.com. I'm actually a live original, and Duck Commander, my dad's business, has used stamps.com, and it's just a way faster, easier process than, like I said, for a lot cheaper. Stamps.com brings the services of the U.S. Postal Service and UPS right to your office, wherever you are, whether you have a small office, small business, or whatever you're rolling with. This, it's really helpful for anyone. You can simply use your computer to print official U.S. postage 24-7 for any letter, any package, any class of mail, anywhere you want to send it. Once your mail is ready, just schedule a pickup or drop it off. It's really just that simple. With Stamps.com, you get discounts up to 40% off post office rates and up to 66% off UPS shipping rates. Not to mention stamps.com is a fraction of the cost of those expensive postage meters. So stamps.com is clearly the way to go. Any kind of business you're running, I think you're really going to benefit from this. So stop wasting your time going to the post office and go to stamps.com instead. There are no risk involved. And with my promo code WO, you can get a special offer that includes a four-week trial plus free postage and a digital scale. No long-term commitments or contracts necessary. Just go to stamps.com, click on the microphone at the top of the homepage and type in WO, that's W-H-O-A, that's stamps.com, promo code WO, stamps.com, you never have to go to the post office again. Um, okay, so I want to talk to you about how you kind of came into what you're doing now. And I, whenever I was listening to videos and stuff, it kind of seems like you like stumbled upon it in college, really, whenever yeah. you were like, okay, maybe I'm going to do this. So tell me, tell me a little bit about that story. Music. So yeah, I grew up in um, Nashville in studios. I, my dad's a producer. And so I saw from a really young age as a kid um, the power that music can have to like bring deep hope to people and to connect with people. But I also saw, um, I was pretty much like 0% enamored with fame. Mm -hmm. Like I watched, you know, families like have a really hard time and and fall apart. Like I, I could see as a kid 
the cost that mm. if that fame could take on yes. a family. And so, yes. and, it's, and for me, that was in the scope of music is what yeah. I was watching. And so that's why I swore. I was like, I, I am not doing music. I got my master's in education. I, I was an English teacher for two years. I loved yeah, it. That's awesome. But I've always loved writing songs and songwriting has been like breathing to me. And in college, I was like basically, cause I was having all the heartbreak times. I was like a bad version of Taylor Swift. Oh <laughs> yes. That's amazing. <laughs> that's amazing. It's just like, you know, sad, sassy, like heartbreak songs so on the guitar. Funny. Um, but not as good as T Swifty. So, um, I, but, but I would sing, here's what happened though. That was really important in that time. I would sing in the, the, the dorm room stairwell. Cause yeah. Hey, sounds great in there. Yeah, like the good acoustics, acoustics are like yes, legit. Yes. And then, uh, B so I wouldn't wake up my roommates. And so, um, what would inevitably happen is I would be playing these, songs like these like sad songs and girls would start lining the stairwell like wow. half the time crying not all of them sober for sure um and, and <laughs> what so would cool. end up happening it was it would be I mean kind of awkward like I would just be like close my eyes little Ellie in college singing playing these songs and look up and there would be like a host of girls in there wow. and they would end up sitting down Sadie on the steps next and be like, thank you for playing that song. Like, thank you. I, that happened to me too. <laughs> wow. So, and I would be like, Hey, my name's Ellie. What is your name again? But I saw in college the power of a song to connect our stories. Wow. That's really and cool. I, that has been, and it continues to be my favorite part of, mm. of my job. When I was a teacher, an English teacher, I used music all the time in the classroom, sang in the classroom, rapped in the classroom. I'm not that's good at rapping, incredible. But I was in, that's I was incredible. In, um, pretty more like urban environments, you know. And so I was just trying to like get the kids engaged, and I'd be like rapping about. Anyway, they that's mainly hilarious. laughed at me. Hilarious. But but music was always a huge part, and I and I sang a song when I told them I was quitting my teaching job and joining my husband's band. He asked me to consider joining his band, which we thought we would do for a year, and here we are, like fifteen years later, doing this music thing together. But so I cool. when I quit, we the first thing we did was we went to volunteer at a Young Life camp, and we sang songs at a Young Life camp. And what I saw at Young Life camp, and this is a huge thing for me, I remember calling my mom and dad. And we've been playing our, our songs, like one song a night, we did a concert in the middle of the week. And I saw the same thing happen at Young Life Camp. Mm. All these girls, I've heard, wow. all these girls wanted to tell me their story just because I played a song. And then at Young Life Camp, I had the opportunity to not just let the song be a bridge to our stories, but to let that's cool the song be an opportunity for me to connect their story to the most beautiful story that I wow. know, which is the story of God sending his son here and of love beating death. Yeah. And I called my mom and dad after that first week of Young Life Camp City, and I was like, I am firing on all cylinders. Like, <laughs> God made me to do this. Yes. Like, I feel so alive. I love this so much. And so um, it's so interesting because I – I still, at that point, I was just like background singer, Love utility it. player in my husband's band, um, not really ever knowing I would be writing my own music and release, like have a whole other career. But wow. um, it was a, it was such a powerful moment. And that's, you know, we're, we're playing with my husband's band in clubs and, and theaters. And, you know, we did that in the summer, but in the year, it's just bars and whatever. Yeah. Playing and not like Christian said, he's just telling stories through songs. and that's awesome. Um, it's just been a beautiful thing over the years to just continue to connect with people in that way. I'm so deeply cool. grateful. I love that. I think that's the coolest thing. And I just want girls to recognize like what you were doing. Like you were just sitting in the stairwell playing. You you y'all were just volunteering at places. And I think a lot of times, especially in the college age um, group and young adults, it's like 
they just want to to be on the stage. You know, I just if I was gonna do this, that would mean then this and this and this would have to just work out. And that's not the case. Like it doesn't just like work out like that. Like you have to, you know, volunteer. You have to sit in the stairwell. Like you just have to like use the gift that God gave you organically and naturally, as if He just gave it to you to bless the world instead of for you to be on a stage. And God will blow your mind in a million different ways, whether it's with a platform or whether it's with change and an impact in the life of the girls in the stairwell and so i just think That's too right. many times like we hold on to our gifts and like try to wait for like there to be a moment to just like go for it when in reality it's like just start saying yes to him every day with those gifts and people are going to see it and you're going to impact so many people along the way it's not just when it that. works out and so when i heard your story i was like that is so so cool and now obviously it worked out and you have a huge platform you and your husband could sing together and do so many great things and you just had an album out and I want to talk to you about it um so tell me about your new album by the way I listened all the way through and it is so incredible we're gonna talk some more oh, about specific you. songs but as a album in general like where did the album where did the inspiration for Canyon come from yeah so I had been on a journey uh via counseling I'm a huge advocate for counseling I never ever thought that I would need to go. And it has totally changed my life. I think because uh, the count, my counselor repeated to me the invitation that Jesus gives to all of us, that where there's truth, there's freedom. Yes. And the truth can be hard. Yes. Like, the truth can be hard. Uh, Brene Brown says the hard, it's the hardest thing to own and stand up in the brokenness in our own story, but it is a great deal harder to spend our lives running from it. That's and so, so true. Man, I, I have been in counseling for years, you know, working through the hard parts of my story, some of the wounds from childhood, college, that unhealthy relationship, all of that. But what I had never allowed myself to do was to grieve. Mm those ones. And so I had acknowledged them. I talked about them. I prayed through them. I've grown a ton. Like, I feel like I'm like a pretty, you know, it's like, I've done a lot of like heart spirit work over the years, praise God. And, am in a different place than I was. But what I realized, um, actually when my daughter went to kindergarten, all of these like kind of childhood wounds that I'd had started coming. I think if we don't grieve properly, it ends up later, coming out sideways, mm -hmm. um, or at least for me it did. Yeah, I agree. And so I'd been on this journey of visiting some of the most painful places in my story and allowing myself to just breathe there and weep and mm -hmm. grieve there. And as I did that, which was visiting places sometimes that felt like they were going to kill me, yeah. you know, I don't know. Yeah. You're just like, why would I go back to that? Like, God has healed me from that. Why would I go grieve that? But man, I was missing so I, what happened as I did that, Sadie, is I encountered the nearness and the tenderness so cool. and the empathy it's of beautiful. God. And the places I thought would kill me to visit, actually, God brought a deeper level of healing and brought me to life in ways that I didn't know I needed to yeah. be brought to life. And so that I had written this whole record about that process. Well, then March 3rd of 2020 hits. An EF4 tornado like tears through our Nashville neighborhood. Scariest night of my life. It went right behind our house. Wow. And oh my um, gosh. woke up to the house shaking. Three oh kids drew gosh. without a town. Getting them down. It was just, it was so scary. And then so much beauty in the wake of that. Rebuilding strangers loving strangers, neighbors loving neighbors. But then a week later, COVID-19 safer at home hit. And it felt like hope and community got quarantined. Wow. I think we all know. I mean, that, I think that's how it felt it for did. a lot of yeah. us. And then in the wake of, of George Floyd, a lot of the racial tension, there was so much political tension, racial tension, division, even within the church. And I, it was just heavy. It was so heavy. So many people were losing so much. And so I think because I had learned to grieve personally, I began to grieve on a global scale to lament, to lament. Um, the experience of some of my black and brown, I started listening intentionally, black and brown brothers and sisters whose stories were totally different than mine just because they looked different. Their skin was a different color than mine. And I just didn't know that that was their experience. So there's this like just grieving season um, where I was like, man, this world is a heavy, broken place. Mm -hmm. And in the midst of all of this, I went to the Grand Canyon. Have you been 
Yes, it yeah, is incredible. Okay. We uh, were just driving to LA one time, so we literally just stopped by and saw it. But even just like seeing it, it's just like mind blowing for real. It's it's crazy, and I. You know, we ended up when the numbers were low last year in August going, which I don't like highly recommend doing the kind of trip we did in August because it is like 117 oh degrees. My it's really hot. Um, but we camped on the Northern Rim, went down into the Grand Canyon, uh, rafted the Colorado River. Wow. Camped on the riverbanks and then rafted out. And so that's amazing. Um, it was honestly very epic i'm like arizona river runners they were a great company i'm like go book a trip they were awesome but it i will never forget our guide telling us when we were down there he was saying like the grand canyon walls tell this story of disaster upon disaster upon disaster it's like and you can see it he's like that's a landslide then a mudslide that was an earthquake there's a volcano wow. and i just was looking up at at this this picture and I just thought this looks exactly like our hearts look, especially after wow. the past year and a half that we've had like loss on loss, trauma on trauma, wound upon weary wound. And, and I just, I think to be human is to be broken. Mm -hmm. Like I, we all know what it's like to have our hearts split wide yeah. open like a Canyon, but there in the very deepest part of the Canyon, there was this river running through wow. and I just thought, Oh my goodness, this is the gospel. Because as it turns out, there is a current of living water. Come There's on. a current of God's love that runs deeper than our deepest sorrow, than our deepest ache, than our deepest pain. And that will carry us when it feels like we can't carry on any longer. So and good. I left the Grand Canyon city and I couldn't shake it. And I wow. feel like what happened is my understanding of the gospel of the way that God had met me and my own personal story, um, was like a raindrop, like this necessary, like I can't survive without the wow. beauty and the nourishment that is in this raindrop. And what happened when I started to grieve on a global scale, a national scale, and then went down into that Grand Canyon. He was like, Ellie, my love is not a raindrop. It's the ocean. It's wow. all of the water. And we are all invited to join up as molecules so of, that, of that living current of water, like streams in the wasteland. Come we on. get to join up with that current of living water as we're carried and transformed yeah. by the refreshment that comes yeah. from that place, from our deepest, well, not when we are on our A game, like That's crushing right. life, yeah. like from our deepest places of mistakes, wounds, pain, ache, when our dreams didn't turn out like they that we thought that they would, God is there and will meet us in that place. Yes. And, and when I look at, when you look at a Canyon, I read this national geographic article. I love how God proclaims his glory through the earth. First of love all, it. but I read this national <laughs> geographic article. I'm like, this person isn't, I don't know where their faith perspective is coming from, but I'm like, this is the backwards upside down nature of the gospel that to, to wow. blessed are those who mourn. Mm. For they will be comforted. Blessed are the poor. Mm. It's it's the opposite of yeah. what I think. It's I always thought God wanted me to climb high, go reach her. And he's like, no, I'm actually down here. Wow. I am in the lowest place that you can go. I'm up there too. Yeah. It's not that he's not there, but he is in the lowest place yes. that you'll ever be. And and he is there with life and healing and hope that our suffering never gets the final word yes. because of who Jesus is and what he did for us. Come on. And so I shoved a pile of 35 songs off my desk and I was like, okay, this is bigger. You're bigger. The, my understanding is being expanded as my heart is breaking. There is more wow. room for your love to flood in. And a canyon, that National Geographic article says that a canyon is actually an upside down mountain. Come on. And so our deepest places of wounding and ache and pain are actually the places, if you will invite God <laughs> into those moments, you are going to look back on your story and say, this is actually my power. Let yeah. me, and it's not my power. It's his power. Yeah. It's his power to meet me in my most wounded, weakest, aching, breaking place. The ash places out by the grave that he is there. Yeah. And the stories that we tell or that I end up telling are not the ones where I got it all right no. and just crushed it. it. It's when I was on my 
in a pile, like weeping in the fetal position yeah, in my true. shower. And, and God met me even there and said, yeah, you're my beloved. Wow. Even right here. Come on, girl. <laughs> Why don't you just preach for a second? That was so good. I can't wait for people to hear that and just amen and just see a new perspective of who God is. And you know what is making me laugh so hard too is that um, back, okay, in seventh grade, my seventh grade year, so my teacher had a board called the stupid board. And if you said something stupid, your quote got put on the board, okay? Oh, yeah, listen to what I said in seventh grade. You're going to love this. I said, we're learning about the Grand Canyon. And I said, is the Grand Canyon a mountain? And he put it on the board because he was like, no, it's a canyon. Why would you ask if the Grand Canyon's a mountain? And I was like, well, if you're standing at the bottom, then it looks like a mountain. And so that is just so crazy that you just said that it was an upside down mountain because like everyone has made fun of me for that quote. And I'm like, no, it's just your perspective. But doesn't it look like a mountain if you're at the bottom of it? And so Dang. that is so cool that you just said that. You were just being a little prop. Hey, I was just looking out with some spiritual eyes, okay? No one else saw what I was saying, but I knew it. I knew it had something to it. Anywho, um, that is hilarious. I want to ask you, and wrapping up shortly, because you've said so much that I really want people to, like, genuinely listen to and take hold of and take to heart mm -hmm. but there was a, some a quote that you said in the song color and you said um you were talking to a god who you're scared to trust and i just mm. thought that was like when you said that like paused it and like rewind i was like yes like sometimes it is really hard to talk to god whenever like you're scared to trust him you know um and sometimes yeah. i think that we shy away from prayers that we really maybe even want to pray because we're scared what the answer will be you know and um Absolutely. i don't know that really gripped me and so for people who are listening to you and you're like yes that's amazing yes god is there yes god is the river running through it but like i'm scared to trust in that god what is some encouragement that you've found from t choosing to trust even when you're scared and afraid yeah, it's such a great question because I um, I call myself a worrier in progress. Mm -hmm. I just, I know God says that we're not supposed to do it and I continue like to do it. And so it is really good for me to talk to the friend. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He's such a dear friend. Um, but I am often scared to trust him. And I think, I think for me, I would just answer that question if it's okay with another story that happened to me in the cane, this is the only way I, I know love, I love how it. to answer it. Um, when we went to sleep that night on the riverbanks, um, our guide first was just told us to jump in the river. It's 50 degrees. The water is 50 degrees, which is very cold. Very, if you don't have cold. like a <laughs> that is very cold. Yeah. Very cold. <laughs> and so he's like, just take the little sheet that we gave you. And, and they, they had these little cots that we could sleep on, take the sheet and go literally jump in the water with your sheet. And I'm like, I'm totally not doing that. Cause that's crazy. Um, but it was, you know, like 95 degrees at night. So I ended up, he was like, so that's the first piece of advice I have you. Second thing you need to do is wake up, make sure you wake up in the middle of the night. Cause there's this thing that happens called the rim effect. Huh. And I had never heard of that, but he said, when the moon sets be behind the canyon walls, he said, you will be in the darkest place wow. that you have ever been in your life because there's no there's ambient no light. Wow. light. There's no light in this place. You're over a mile into the surface of the earth and you'll be further away from the stars than you've ever been in your life. But because it is so dark, the stars will shine brighter than they have ever shown before. And they will appear closer than they have ever appeared before. Wow. And I think what happened, I woke up in the middle of the night because I got really hot and I was so grateful because the stars, Sadie, were like wow. right here. And I think for me, when I've taken the wow. risk to trust God, even when I'm scared to trust him because I'm, I'm hurting. It's usually when I'm hurting mm -hmm. and I'm like, why you're a good God. Why would you let this hard thing happen? Like, and, and that's when sometimes I think when I, I don't know when I'm more fearful to approach him because I'm mad, honestly, yeah. and confused and sad. But when I can come to him with all that, mm -hmm. he says we can come as we are. Yeah. So yeah. I think for me, I have, I have been 
I think that is the times when I have encountered his light yes. um, in the most palpable way when I can kind of push through those fears and trust him even when I'm scared because I'm in such a dark place. His light has shone so bright mm-hmm. and his nearness has felt Um, I don't know, almost palpable. And so I would just encourage you if you are in that place as a fellow sojourner, like your fellow sister on the road, on the journey, who's been scared a lot to trust God. um, I would say I have never regretted trusting him. I have never regretted. I have zero regrets ever pouring my heart, whether it's been tears, questions, spewing like, like, I mean, I have come angry and raw before him and he can handle that. And, um, and he has helped me in those places. And so so I just, there is such freedom because of who Jesus is for us to just come as we are broken, stumbling, um, doubting, questioning and, and to, and no, I just want you to know that you are coming to the safest place imaginable, like to the most place where you will belong no matter what you are kind of carrying Mm -hmm. and because of who Jesus is and how he loves you. So good. Oh my gosh. I just feel like this is just going to help so many people. I know it is so good. Uh, I just want to end it with one, a quote from your song that I love so much. It says, got a lot of bad days still coming our way, but it's sweet ever after. And I just think that's so good. And it's so hope filled. It's like, yes, times are hard. Yes, things are going to continue to be hard probably for a little bit, but it's sweet ever after. And I think that you just have put so much um, real authentic things that you're going through that are very vulnerable and very hard and everyone can connect on that, but you've also filled it with hope and there is a hope and there is a future and that it is good because God is there. And I just want to thank you for that because that is what we need these days. Thanks for pushing aside the 35, which I'm sure we're all amazing songs and, you know, (laughs) listening to what God had for the now because it speaks volumes. And so if uh, girls, if you are, you know, listening to this and guys too, I know there's some guys listening listening and you were impacted by the things that she said i just encourage you to go listen to her album canyon i think it will continue to bless you and ellie thank you so much for being on the what it's good podcast and pouring in so much good advice and just being such a, a real and bubbly and friendly authentic version of you <laughs> thank you friend <laughs> thank you for having me and it's so good to finally meet you i love you and hey yeah. you take that quote off the stupid board that was just Thank spiritual. You. That was a spiritual download. You put it on the Thank spiritual you. download board that the Lord gave. <laughs> we are taking that off. We are putting the eraser over that. Thank you so much. Well, I love you already too. Let's for real hang out in real life one day. And uh, God bless your family. Thanks. Friend. All right. Uh, yours awesome. too.